ready to go again talking about the battle of war of the mind. I know we bumped around a little bit on last night and however which way, but it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. But we're going to get started one way or another as soon as I find out where I am. Welcome to Living Strong, where I'm your host, Prophet Johnson. War of the mind. Where are these battles coming from? Suicide thoughts, murder, evil, hatred, racism. Been going on for years. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Something at the end is expected to bless you. Why is it? that there are so many thought processes. The enemy is speaking well to people. people. The enemy even got people thinking that it's God. You got more people saying what God said, that the devil is saying that you ain't never heard so much of it all your life. You know, the Lord showed me this, and God showed me that it ain't nothing but the devil showing them everything. Every good gift comes from above. People come up to me and challenge me and ask me stuff and <coughs> want to beat me up in the questioning process as I'm interrogated. And I tell them one thing that they will never do. They will never do this. They will not do this for no reason at all. I say, well, go ask God. That, go ask God. I say, go ask God if that's not what he said. I, go ask him. Oh, no, I, why am I going to ask the Lord? I'm talking to you. <laughs> Wait a minute here. You want to make me out of the biggest devil in the world, but you won't ask Jesus whether or not I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because they know it's the truth either way it goes. I don't care about you demonizing me. When you get through, God going to bring it to pass one way or another. I never understood it. Never understood anything in this life. But now I see what this life is all about. Can't y'all see it? I've been saying all week, life is short. War of the mind. What does the battle come from? Simply trying to make up your mind whether or not you're going to go to the store. Lord, I need to go to the store and pick up something to cook. But I don't feel like it right now. Lord, I need to clean up. Still ain't got the house cleaned up out of all this time. Lord, I need to get my education started. Need to do this. Need to do that. I need to make a decision about my job. I need to make a decision about my personal life. I need to make a decision about a house, a car, or whatever. It's just so much I got. I need to make decisions about my body. Lord Jesus, I know that I was supposed to be going on a diet last week. Only this week I went on a seafood diet. I'm eating more than what I ate last week. The only thing I lost was five pounds and gained ten. Where's the battles coming from? Why is it that a person have to sit down and eat a ton of food, finish up the food, and still not be satisfied. Where's this emotional war coming from? I saw the um, documentary of the children who have a disease that eats and don't know that they're full. And they literally have to stop them from eating because they will kill themselves in eating. They have to chain up the refrigerator, and I thought it was really interesting because they have to chain up the refrigerator and everything. And my belly tell me I'm get that my belly tell me when I'm getting full off the first bite. And I thought I thought that's interesting to see this, to know that this really does exist. Have y'all noticed all the strange diagnoses in the world now that we got? all the way down to the latest of COVID-19, taking shots. 
Have y'all noticed all this stuff that they got in the world now? Bipolar, schizophrenic, uh, syndrome, special needs, uh, ADHD, and T TMDS, and, and all that, whatever, MSB, whatever them things are. Have y'all seen all these diseases and all these problems that talking about we need counselors and we need mental health? to be working with the police and authority, talk about all the money that's getting thrown away, all the money that they still in line cheating about. Y'all ever thought about all that stuff? You ever thought about the parks and Disney World and all the restaurants that you see every day and everything on TV advertising? You can't turn on television unless they got a car shield commercial. Everybody in America should have that, which don't make no sense. 5,000 miles to 150,000 miles, that's a dead giveaway. Only a fool, <laughs> I have to say it like that, like me, and like I've been in the past, will go and get a, a, a deal like that. Because that means that Cap is going to be making payments on his vehicle while it is fixed and running well. And what, don't no vehicle tear up. Until after 150,000, 175,000, 200,000 miles, that's when they start tearing up. So 5,000 miles to 150,000 vehicle is brand spanking new, which is the dumbest commercial in the world. Got the black folks on there begging like crazy every time you turn around. I get so tired of flipping the TV. Everybody in the world should have a diet pill, neutral sweet or neutral bullet or whatever them things are. Every last one of you should have a diet pill. Shouldn't be no fat people in America based upon how many times them television commercial come on. Them thousand pound sisters, I bet I guarantee you they ain't ordered no neutral bullet or no neutral sweet, whatever the things are, no granola cracker. They're not gonna order that thing to eat that. Those pieces those those folks getting pizza from Domino's thick crust three layers high. And that's just the advertisement. Okay? You got people that literally eat three and four chickens a night. That's right. This is people that does this stuff. And the thing that I find real strange, and skinny people got big lips, some of them. Some of them got lizard lips. But the thing that I see, I see so strange about a lot of the people that weigh 500 pounds and all that stuff, three and four, they have them on TV, all of them got little old bitty mouths. They got little old bitty mouth. They got little old tiny little old mouth with a little old lizard, little slit lip, you can take an ink pen and, 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 and draw one line over it, and it cover the whole lip red. If you got lipstick, all you got to do is take an ink pen. And they got one little dollar slit lip that looked like a lizard, but they able to open their mouth. They were able to open their mouth real big. I don't know how they do it. And they keep eating, and they keep eating, and you can see the fat go from the face to the chin straight down to where they don't they no longer have a face. All they got is skin and fat that go straight down from side to side to their neck. And so you look at this and you wonder, is this stuff serious? War of the minds? Are you serious? What is this about these abortions? Why would anyone think to kill a child? I, I hate to talk about that because that, that happened to me. And... Um, I was told that, but I, I, could, I never could understand that because the opposite is that I love children. I, I love children, but why would anyone even want to think about killing a child? War of the mind. Why would, but see, the thing about it, I always say, don't get the woman first. Go get the man that got the woman pregnant. Yeah, that's right. How about... Uh, go killing the man that got the woman pregnant before you kill the child. Say to him, sir, if you get that woman pregnant without the responsibility of taking care of that child and she decides to have an abortion, well, we got a choice to kill you first before we kill the baby. I guarantee you, it won't be no babies out there. Every man will have that glove covered with, that love covered with a glove. Won't be no women getting pregnant then. Oh, man, she ain't killing me. I ain't getting her pregnant. But where's the man when the woman go to the clinic? Where's the man when the woman make the decision? And then women. Why would you be so foolish and naive? 
Because the heat of the moment is going to get you now. Oh, 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 Johnny, wait, wait. Did you bring a random? Did you bring a random? Oh, no, honey, we're too hot. We're in the moment. I'm, I'm reaching Niagara Falls now. I'm about to touch the moon. Ooh, hold on, Johnny. Pop goes the weasel. Why and why and why? Why can't you control the passion? Because nature don't allow it. Especially when you're in the prime of your libido. Prophet Johnson, we're going to read the Bible. No, we're talking about wars. I don't want to read the Bible. I want to talk to y'all. Can we just talk to y'all? Can we just, how about just throw the Bible out because we don't pay it no attention anyway? War of the mind. Where does this battle come from? That causes us to want to go get an illegal smooch. Now wait, now don't get mad. Come on, tell the truth. But that comes from human nature. I know what you're saying. Come from a hard on and a hard head. That's right. I know what you're saying. Come from a hot tail. Like little Sally Walker. Where does this battle come from that will make a married man that's got a good woman at home? I'm not talking about a heifer. What would this spirit come from that will make a married woman that's got a good husband at home? Now, I'm not talking about a bastard. What would make them go out and mess up on a good spouse? They say that if you mess up one time, you may have made a mistake. You mess up two times, my God, you just backslid. But they say you mess up the third time, you ain't nothing but a whore. Why? Where does this battle come from? What's driving that person to go out and commit sin against the covenant of God that eventually will, eventually will destroy a marriage in a family. What causes that? Where did this war come from? The husband and the wife is not seeking God. If one or the other was seeking God and hearing God, they're going to know what to do. They're not going to go out and break the covenant and mess up. And even if they do, they're not going to untie God's covenant unless they've done it before. See, you don't have to worry about the third time around. First time around, flop it. Throw it out the window, that's junk. That marriage is dead, rendezvous, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Ooh, ah, coochie, coochie, it's over. Second time around, driving, hoping and holding on, wind blowing. Wind blowing real hard about to blow. Next thing you know, wind blows so hard, doesn't slip, plastic doesn't slip out the window. That's gone. That's done for. Now you've been there twice. Third time around, forget it. You ain't going nowhere. You're done for now. You locked in. Men and women, y'all need to listen to me. These are wars of the mind. We'll read the Bible if I read the Bible. If you meet a person that's been married twice, two, or three times, that person, the fourth and fifth marriage, or the third and fourth marriage, you, you don't ever have to worry about that person going nowhere no more. Because they done sexed out. So they're on their last sex capade in life and time is running out. See, because that's going to put, put them over into the 50, the 60, 70 year old. So you don't have to worry about nowhere. Men, if you want a stay at home woman, go get one that doesn't been married three times or four times. Okay? Women, if you want a stay at home man, go get one that's been married three or four times that's run down. He can't go nowhere else. He got to stay at home now. All of you second 
timers and first timers, y'all still on thin ice. You don't get free till you marry the third time. They say second time around is better than the first time. Third time around is better than the second time in the first time. My mama told me something. She said, oh, don't worry, Scott. Don't worry now. That's done. It locked in on that third one. I tell you what, that's why I like talking to me mommy. Where we at? I didn't tell y'all where we was going, did I? Let's go to where is this? First Peter, chapter number one. <coughs> uh, yeah, I think I said something about that. First Peter, chapter number one. Let's look at verse number uh I don't like this right here because I got to read. I don't want to read nothing. I'm being lazy. Let me just start out at verse number three and I can catch you up right quick. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with according to, the abund to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay, we're blessing God for Jesus coming and dying for our sins and getting up and saying, come on up to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled in that faded, not a way reserved in heaven for you. That's what we're after. Inheritance incorruptible, undefiled in that faded, not a way reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, oh God. Woo, boy! Man, I figured it out. Took forever, but God, the fool figured this, baby. He figured it. God, he figured this one. There is nothing on earth worth living for. Oops. <laughs> Wait a minute, you got it wrong, Prophet Johnson. Let me straighten out what I just made a mistake of saying the truth about. There's nothing on earth worth dying for. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. My children. No, 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 no. Jesus already took care of all that. What are you living for on this earth? No, wait now. What are you living for on this earth? I live for money. I live for love. I live to pay my bills and to be successful. You know what I'm tired of hearing? I tell y'all what I'm tired of hearing all the time. I get so tired of hearing on television. And y'all know I'm going to bring it up. Have you ever heard the first black man to become mayor? The first black woman? The first black track star? The first black baseball player? I get so tired of white people telling us about the first black Negro that they incorporate. Why can't we hear about the first white person that did something? Now, the reason you can't hear about the word first white person that did something, because they did everything first. Except the truth. And black people think they something. All up on television cheesing. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Look at the butter. I'm the first black. I'm the first African-American Negro to be inducted into the Whiteologist Hall of Fame of life. I be the first nigga. Say it. Hate it. As if you have contributed some type of glory to the kingdom of God. You haven't 
given heaven, not one root word damnation, damned thing. But your glory, proud, first black, get rid of those sick statements on a football team, on a basketball team. We need more of this. The first black. Y'all crazy. They're crazy. Who was that? Uh, what was that guy's name? I think of his name. Christopher Addicts. John Paul Jones. Give us liberty, give us death. Christopher Addicts died at the Battle of what is that Tea Party deal? I don't forget <laughs> way back then. I can't, can't think Battle of Maddox or whatever that thing was. And they gonna put it in the history books. Christopher Addis, the first black guy, first person to die. He you think I'd be proud to be the first black man to die for some white history book? Black people, like that woman told me, she said, you don't know who you are. She was right. That woman cried. That woman cried. Tears in her eyes. Trying her best to fix me something to eat. Knew I was broken to hell and back. Trying to help me. She said, Prophet Johnson, you don't know who you are. She said, the people know, but you don't know. I had no idea. I had no idea. A woman cut that salad, put them tomatoes, put that food together, and said, you need to eat because you're going to fall apart. Tears in my eyes. I thank God for Eight went on about my way. And it took God to give me the revelation of who I was. And when I found out exactly who I was, it was the worst feeling in the whole world. I said, God, all this time, I've been a fool. Boy, y'all don't know. Boy, people need to wake up. They just don't know. Let's look at this. Okay, Cap, we're going to move on. All right. Um, we're right here talking about, uh, let's see, in her, who are kept by the power of God, verse number 5, through faith, uh, First Peter, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. The Bible tells you that there are going to be seasons in your life to where there's going to be heaviness and many temptations that's going to try to come and mess you up. It's telling you that. The reason why, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than, than, than of gold that perish it, though it be tried with fire. This is faith tried by the fire. We used to preach that. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory in the appearing of Christ. Now, y'all got to excuse me. I got ginger chew here. And that's for a queasy if it come on me and that'll happen. And that's why I got to have the water here. Take the ginger chew to knock it off. And the reason why is because it causes that to kick back. Otherwise, I get to quit and I have to quit. Okay, verse number eight. Might be found to the praise and honor and glory of an appearing of Jesus Christ. That's verse number seven. Whom having not seen, you love. You haven't seen Christ, but you love him. And whom though you in whom, though now you see him, 
Not yet. If I could just, Lord, help me to read my Ebonics country style Mississippi. Verse number 8. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, that's a level of faith that's unprecedented. We do it all the time. We Christian coastals, Baptocostal, Methocostal, we all love praising God. We believe, we give God glory, we thank God for it. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And this is what this was all about. Now we're talking about war of the minds. Why are these wars and battles here? Let me say this right quick for those of you who think that you're getting too old and that time is running out. Y'all excuse me, they're alive on the air. If I you know, get rid of that piece of candy, fall out, whatever. I'm just all natural. That's, that's me. I'm all natural. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't no $3 bill here. Nothing fake about me. Nothing fake. And uh, you think the time is running out? Oh, Lord, I'm about 40 years old. And poor little old me. I don't even have a spouse, a boyfriend, or a smoochaloochie. What is eyes going to do? Jesus saying, chill out. That clock ain't going nowhere. You got plenty of time in life. Plenty of time. Just like I told them. 70, 85, 90 year old. Those are your too hot to trot right there. A 90-year-old man just not starting to slow down. 90 years old just not picking up the cane for the first time. Say, Lord, let me get this stick to help me get in here and get outside and get the grass cut. 70-year-olds are bad to the bone. 80-year-olds, they just living the life. All you 40, 50, and 30-year-olds, you little 60s, y'all drying on out. Y'all can get on back too. Y'all ain't doing nothing. The man is hot 60s, ain't doing nothing. 50 on down the line, y'all might well go sit down. Y'all might well go camping. Because y'all through. Captain be rushing me, I told y'all. He rushed me every time I get on here. He shot me on the radio. He shot me on the air here too. Who knows? <coughs> I read something so we can finish up. I get to a scripture. Let, let me go ahead and skip down right quick. Um. Receiving the end of, of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Verse number 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Look at what he's saying. Gird up the loins of your mind, which means your mind wears a pair of pants. Your mind got a waist. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of of Jesus Christ as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance did y'all hear that the former lust in your ignorance you know how it is when you was a child you done dumb you did dumb things he's saying learn from that and be through with it now the next part going to end up going to eliminate the church but as he which have called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. And that ain't going to happen. That's just not going to happen. People are not going to be holy in all manner of conversation. That's just all there is to it. You, you'll lose your job. You, you'll get kicked off the air. Uh, you, you'll be through. So the Bible tells you, try at least a little bit. You know, be holy in all manner of conversation. In other words, what he's saying, he's not saying walk around saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I got a big halo. No, what he's saying is to be discernible, be uh, graceful. It's to be able to communicate without provocativeness. And it's, it's knowing how to carry out a conversation 
Being holy means a clean conversation. Okay? That's all he's saying. Captain, I'm closing. This is it. This is it. The second epistle. Beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior. And that's Second Peter chapter number 3, verse number 1, 2, and last verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. And that's just where we are. That's just where we are in the last days. Scoffers are coming, people walking after their own lust. You saw this to it. And so, I know we didn't get hot and heavy like I, I wanted to, but hey, I'm just talking through this. Talking about uh, uh, war of the mind. And that's going to be my time, and I'd like to thank you for yours. Will you repeat after me and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. There's a blessing coming on. And I receive Jesus Christ, the blessing of the Lord, make it rich and add no sorrow to it. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I'm about to bless you by winter time. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, and I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. And no man will be able to comprehend it. For I, the Lord, have set forth the order. Let it be known this day as you speak it, so shall it be. You shall ride up on the wings of the cloud, and you shall set forth the rain in the order of the land. And know that it is the Lord thy God which healed thee, which have blessed thee, have brought thee out into a wealthy place. For even as they see and they hear, they shall see and know, saith the Lord. For I will make thee rich before their faces, time and a season in which they look for your fall. Say unto them now, Watch me, bless, grow, and make my prophet a very, very, very wealthy man in the land of earth among human beings. Let it be written as it is this day. Thus said the Lord God, I have given you the cherishedness of the world. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That's my time. Thank you for yours. I'll see you next time. Who was that for, Prophet Johnson? Me. Have a good night. Bye. Just a rich man, that's all.